Today we will be talking about preparing for the upcoming season, our online program, and Jim Rohn. Welcome to episode 36, isn't it Spiz? Episode 36 of Run It Straight. First question, anonymous. How can I be best prepared for the upcoming season? So this would be one of the generic ones. So for anyone giving us questions, please give us a little more detail and context. Um, generic answer, train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> All right, so let's assume you're asking the question right now um, when we're recording this. So this one, this, is this gonna go up soon? Not this Friday, next Friday. Um, okay, so look, this is still going to be relevant. So let's assume you're asking this question right now when you're about to start or maybe you've just started your pre-season with your club. So maybe it's six to eight weeks until the season starts. Um, first and foremost, get fit. If you're fitter, you'll be able to play harder for longer. You'll be able to make better decisions on the field because you're not fatigued. You know, you'll have better technique both in attack and defense. You'll be able to communicate both in attack and defense, you know, acting as a support player, pushing across in defense. Um, yeah, get fitter, that's, that's pretty... Number one. That's number one, number one, get fitter. Uh, secondly, I would start doing some speed work. You know, two months, if we've said six to eight weeks, depending on when your comp starts, um, two months is plenty of time to work on your speed. Now, a couple of little things. One, if you wanna be really fast, you need to have picked the right parents, okay? No amount of training is going to make you really fast. However, everyone can get faster. It doesn't matter if you're a winger or a middle forward, you can still get faster. And so that's what we wanna be, um, that's why we wanna be training speed, true? Yes. Uh, so, and when I say speed, I mean speed and or change of direction because you should be including that stuff in both because they're obviously both physical qualities um, you need. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, six to eight weeks is actually plenty of time to make an improvement in that area. Uh, your nervous system adaptations, they will take place, um, particularly if, and again, I'm assuming because we don't have enough information there, but if you're fairly untrained or completely untrained and you start doing deliberate speed work, you'll actually see the biggest improvement of anyone um, who's undertaking that. Um, the other thing that training speed will do, aside from improving your speed, is it's gonna make your body more robust, so you're less chance of getting injured, both with the training you're doing on your own, with the training you're doing with your club, and then in actual games. Um, there's some pretty good data out of most of the NRL clubs. They know that if they don't have their players running at 90 to 95% of their max velocity for a certain distance each week, the incidence of, say, hamstring pulls and groin pulls goes up during games. So they know, they know that they've got certain numbers that they need to hit. It might be they need to be doing 800 to 1,000 meters a week of top velocity work. Um, doing that will prevent pulls, and it works all the way same down to it doesn't matter whether you're playing under 14s, under 18s, it's gonna reduce the chance of injury. Um, anything else? And look, that, I mean, that goes for all kinds of training, right? What are the two objectives of training? It's number one, to improve performance, and number two, to reduce the incidence of injury. You can swap those two around. I wasn't putting them in any particular order because one has a greater preference, is more important than the other, but the, the two purposes of training is to reduce the incidence of injury and to improve performance. Um, and obviously, as we just mentioned, those are the two ways that, that anything you want to add on speed and change of direction? Um, the gym program needs to change. So we touched on in our last episode, power training. So by that time you should be hitting a strength phase and then leading into a power phase right before the season starts. But where, maybe where, well I was assuming that this person is not even doing gym training. Ah, okay, so just preparation for training on the field. Yeah, assuming that's all you're doing. Um, gotcha. So number one, get fitter. Number two, speed and change your direction. Number three, start hammering on your ball skills. Um, whether you're a half, a hooker, a middle or a winger, at some point in the game you're going to have to catch the ball. Um, even you wingers, yeah? Yes. Um, and more than likely, you're going to have to pass the ball. There's nothing worse than seeing, you know, there's a back line, because we get, we get told a lot of wingers, oh, I don't need to learn to pass the ball, I never really have to pass the ball. It's like, really? There's nothing worse than seeing, you know, a couple of front rowers take hit-ups, 
The ball then goes on the back line. Center tries to beat, gets outside his, his man, but then you know the wing comes in, tackles him. He gets tackled to the ground. And then the winger who never has to pass has to jump into dummy half and throw a 10 meter spiral back to the, um, the half back or to a middle forward. And they stand in that position and they're like, uh oh. Yeah. And they throw the ball and it's a harbour bridge pass or it's behind or it's front. The front rower knocks the ball on and there's your winger saying, oh, I don't need to pass the ball. Yes. True? Yes. Do we have an age group? Uh, no, we have, what, what, what do I, how do I can be best, best prepared for the upcoming season? Okay. We do not have an age group. Okay. Um, so, yes, you need to pass, but ball handling, gripping, uh, carrying skills, catching skills, off, and then passing, so offload six o'clock pass, and yes, even spirals for wingers. All of those things you should be doing and you should be hammering on those on a regular basis as often as you can. We have all of our boys in the program doing that. We've got, um, we've got sessions that they should be doing at home in their own time, virtually every single day. It makes up a big part of our grading grid um, because maybe you might only get seven or eight carries in a game the times you're gonna to touch the ball. And if your skills are poor and you drop it on one of those, A, you're letting yourself down, B, you're letting the team down. And your performance and your confidence is going to drop as a result of you. How often do we see? We go and we watch kids play 14s, 15s, 16s. First time the ball comes, they knock on, yep. and the head drops, and the shoulders drop, and they slump, and then they have a bad game because of the way that it started. Okay? Um, so you just, generally speaking in rugby league, the team that makes less errors usually wins the game. It's not always the case, but that's why they, that's why they put those stats up at halftime and they look at completion rates, because generally speaking, the team that wins completes more sets. So you don't want to be contributing to losing by uh, uh, non-completions, by knock-ons, by poor ball handling, by maybe you don't knock it on, but you throw a pass, it's too high, too low, too fast, um, and the person knocks on, then as a result, that is still your fault. You've contributed to that. Um, anything else on working on your skills? Because again, we're assuming here that you're on your own. Like we would yeah. say definitely tackling, getting contact confidence and getting lots of reps in there is extremely valuable. Um, but we're just looking at what it is that you can be doing on your own. And again, if you're a spine player, you've got to add in kicking. Um, but yeah, so I guess in essence to sum it up, get fitter, work on your speed and change of direction, work on your skills. So what could get, that look like? Get skill specific. Yeah, get skill specific. Again, yeah. if you're a middle forward or a second rower and you need, you've got to work on your offloads. Um, if you're a winger, catch some bombs. Yeah, even if you're putting them up yourself. If you're down the park, just, okay, I'm going to put up 20. Yeah. And, I, and we've got different levels of, of, of this that we would be advising people, but catch some that are just straight on. It's like a clearing kick and you're just looking to take it on the full. So you've just got a cradle catch. Catch some where you've got to imagine that there's you're people competing. that are competing for it. So you've got a jump cradle catch. And then where there's some where you have to, just, you have to make sure you get up and you knock it out. You're, it's a defending bomb. And a little bit more AFL style, you might be going up with your hands up because you might need to reach over the six foot three winger who's on your side just to knock the ball out. So get reps in with each of those different, get 20 to 30 reps of one, 20 to 30 reps of another, 20 to 30 reps of another. And look, it's not gonna take that long. It might take 15, 20 minutes of skill work, but it pays off when you're in the game, three kicks go to you, you catch all of them, you're gonna walk off feeling good. Or if three kicks come to you and you knock them all on, you're not gonna be feeling so good. So what, what would a week look like? Let's say they've got typical, Pre-season at a junior rugby league club, they're training Tuesday and Thursday. Yep. What could, what could it look like? What could they do on some of the other afternoons? Again, we're assuming they're not in a gym. Uh, on the Monday, they could uh, definitely do some ball skill handling um, because Tuesday is most likely their conditioning day. It's usually how it works. Yep. Uh, on the Wednesday, you try to do some extras with your defense and some ball skills again. You've got Thursday ball skill handling, and then Friday could be like an extra run. Yep, and then maybe on the weekends, because you're not playing games yet, maybe Saturday you might be doing a speed session. It might be a bigger session, like a field session. Do some speed work, and then you do some con that's at the field. Um, and then just plug gaps, look at what, you know, if, if you're running a Bronco, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of above six minutes 30, then you probably need to be doing some more con. But if it's under six minutes, depending on your age group that might not be too bad if it's closer to five then maybe you just spend all of your time doing speed and change of direction and look another thing they can be doing on their own uh stretching so oh 100 percent. every yeah. single day we all know you're on your phone don't tell us you're not because you do and then we look at your phone and then it was only five hours yesterday so do don't just sit on the couch don't just sit in the chair don't just sit on the bed lie on your bed when you're doing it do something that's a little bit more useful do your stretching do your mobility 
and then that's something that's necessary in almost every scenario except for someone who's hypermobile. So yeah, which is such a small percentage. Exactly. Um, yeah. So get fitter, work on your speed, change your direction, work on your skills, flexibility, mobility, stretching. Cool. Oh yeah, that's good. All right. Next question from Eric. Do you guys offer an online program? Do we? Yes, we do. Uh, we actually have the most comprehensive online program that there is. Uh, so what it entails, essentially when someone comes to us, uh, typically through the website they apply and they want to know a little bit more information, um, we get them on the phone and we have a chat and we talk through everything that's in the program. What would happen is if, if you were looking for online training, because I mean at the moment we've got people from Darwin, Melbourne, Cairns, Townsville, Newcastle, um, Dubbo, New Zealand, we've got people that are all over the place in our online program. Once we've had that initial chat um, and we think you're a good fit, what we do is we send out an assessment package um, with a huge number of tests to, for you to perform. Some of them you just simply write down the number um, or of, of whatever the test is that we've asked you to do. On others, we actually want you to film yourself doing the test. So there's ball handling things, there's passing, there's speed, change of direction, conditioning drills, um, there's flexibility, movement patterns uh, that we want you to go through and we get you to film that from a couple of d different angles. You then upload all of that data, um, both the videos and then just the hard data in, onto a Google Drive. We set all of this up for you, so it's really, really simple and really easy and straightforward. We've got videos telling you how to do all of the tests. Um, then we can sit down and we can build the program for you. Uh, and so what's in the program? There will be a specific field program designed around whatever it is that we've seen as, as priority for you to work on, whether it's, it's conditioning, trying to get your body fat levels down, whether it's speed, whether it's change of direction, it could be a combination of those particular things. So that'll go into your field program and these field programs, they'll be adapted, developed and changed every three weeks. So you'll work on that program for a few weeks, then you'll change. Uh, we've got position specific skill programs. So whether you're a, a second rower or a winger or a hooker, middle forward, an adjustable, so like a, a half five eight, we have different skill programs again, which will be progressing. So you'll perform a set uh, program and it might be a 20 to 30 minute skill program for three weeks and then the next one builds on those skills and it continues to build on those skills uh, you would be given a resistance training program so depending most of the clients who work with us we do get them to go and join a gym although we do have some home, home programs that we do use and that resistance training program again based off a whole lot of variables will decide which program we need to build and put you on um, again like we've mentioned earlier, we could be working on strength, it could be power, it could be body composition changes, so you might need to add on some muscle mass, lose some body fat or a combination of both. That program, now all, all of these programs, because a little bit more in there, but all of this stuff is uploaded into an app, the League Fit app that we have you download, and there's complete videos of everything that you need to do in there. You actually log what you're doing in there, so we tell you how many sets and how many reps of every exercise, not just the gym stuff, but when it's the skill, we might have you throwing particular kinds of passes. There could be six or eight different types of passes um, that we have you throwing in a skill session. We'll tell you how many times we want you to do those, left to right, right to left, all of that is in there. It's it, so it's, it's very, very foolproof. Um, on top of that, we have a nutritional plan and we have you start to track your food, which is integrated th into the app through MyFitnessPal. Yep. Um, so we set the targets that we want for you, again, based off that initial testing. Um, and there's some other things I'll mention on that in a minute. Um, and then we also, we have a flexibility and mobility plan. Like I said, with those videos that we test at the start of your range of motion in your ankle, in your hip, in your shoulder, get you doing some movements like squats and we film that and we look at the areas that are tight and need work. Those are the areas that we get you to start to work on in your flexibility and mobility plan. Um, all of this is put together in a schedule. So we look at you tell us in that initial chat, what days you've got training and if you play games on Friday nights or Saturdays or Sunday, and we build a schedule that fits in around that. Um, a lot of the times it does have you training mornings and afternoons because you know, we, we, our goal is to make you an elite, as an elite rugby league player as you can be, which means you've got to put the work in. Um, but the most important part of the entire thing is the accountability that we have uh, with you, which is you're assigned a coach and so that coach will go through the app every day and check what you have done the previous day, check what you were supposed to do and then what you actually did, and then they'll be giving you feedback. So if you track, say, two meals and you missed dinner, they'll be saying, you know, hey, Tyler, you didn't track your food last night. What's going on? 
and you're also under on your protein. We need to get that up. Tyler might then come back to him. This chat, this all happens in the app. So there's a messenger within the app itself. Tyler might come back and say, oh yeah, I'm really struggling on protein. I'm not sure what to eat. Then we can send you, you can try eating this, this, and this. Here are a couple of recipes that are really easy um, to take to school for lunch. Um, it might be, we could look in there and see, oh yeah, the last two sessions you haven't increased the load at all on your squat or on your pull down or whatever it happens to be. And so we've got really, really good daily two-way communication happening between the coach and between the player. Um, and so it's something that we always like to talk about is what gets measured gets managed. Okay, so we've, we're looking to measure as many possible things as we can, which like we said, we've got the field program, we've got the skill program, we've got the resistance training program, the flexibility and mobility program, we've got your nutritional plan, that we're and we try and track every single one of these uh, features the entire time, and we come back daily. So you know, the only time we're not looking at it is on the weekend, but then on the Monday, whatever you, you have or you haven't done on the Saturday or the Sunday, you're gonna be held accountable for. Um, and I mean, how important is accountability? I was just going to say, I touch on that, and uh, accountability is probably my favorite part about our online program as well. So there's plenty of online programs out there which, you know, you purchase a program and then that's pretty much it. Uh, whereas the yeah. in-depth, yeah, whereas the, the in-depth, uh, or the level that we go into with testing every single thing that we can without you physically being here, uh, as well as checking in on a daily basis to make sure you're actually doing it. Um, is a higher percentage of people who follow it and continue to follow it and get good results. results yeah 100% percent well. there's so many other things where they'll have a sales page on their website and then enter your details and then you get sent the canned program when I say canned I mean it's there's a set written program you give them your credit card details and then you get sent that it doesn't matter whether you're six foot two or five foot eleven it yeah. doesn't matter if you've got tight hips or tight shoulders or any of those particular things it's just a simple this is why we actually conduct an initial zoom um, chat where we actually talk you through everything that it is that we want to be doing and we get a feel for where you are we get a feel oftentimes uh, we might have the player and their parent it could be mum or dad could be on the call with them um, for some of the older kids that's not the case but for a lot of the younger ones that is the case so we can actually ask all of those questions and find out we want to know you know does Tyler have time to train in the mornings before school what time does he leave for school what are his sleep habits like what's his phone usage like what's his diet like all of those particular things um, because we started this out from the concept of if we want to do the best job we possibly can what are all the things that we want to include and then we've gone about building that um, so yes we have an online program we have the best online program and it's not just the best rugby league program I've had a look at a whole lot of other programs and they don't have the accountability aspect of it so yeah, uh, on that front, I think we're crushing it. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested, go to the website, send us a private message. We can send you a link to get there, but go to the website, ha click on the online tab, um, send your information through and we can have a chat and see if it's something, something that suits you. Uh, last little thing, not a question, but an information dump. Uh, we've given you a few people in the past to talk about. We've gone through Tom Bilyeu, Eric Thomas, uh, David Goggins, Tim Grover, Tony Robbins, and now we're actually looking at Tony Robbins' mentor, Jim Rohn. Now, Jim Rohn died in 2009, I think, um, and he worked like really up really close to his death. Uh, 1930 to 2009, he was a motivational speaker and an author. There are, an, there, there are hundreds of videos of his on YouTube. If you just put him in, if you put in Jim Rohn motivation, or just Jim Rohn will be enough. And he has very, very structured processes about goal setting, about looking at, me, at short, medium, and long-term goals and how you can go about transforming particular areas of your life. Obviously on here, the reason we wanna get you to listen to this is, is a couple. We wanna, be, we wanna get you looking at how you can apply those things particularly to whatever your goals are within rugby league. So setting those, those goals, breaking them down into nice bite-sized chunks, and then how do you work about um, achieving those? And secondly, we've talked about it before, is you are who you hang around. And thanks to digital technology now, you can hang around these guys. In the past, you had to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to a ticket. You had to wait for them to come out to your country. It was really, really hard to get access to. YouTube has fixed all of that, okay? So you can be hanging around these guys on a daily basis, and you need to be. You need to stop watching, you know, dog videos on TikTok um, and start filling your head with this kind of stuff. True? Yep. Um, and that's going to do us for today. All right, so... Please send your questions in, go to YouTube, like the videos, share the videos. Um, yeah, any direction you want us to go with things, please let us know. Otherwise, we will see you in the next episode. Cheers.